in a world. Four friends, one mission. Mikey, what are you doing? I'm doing the thing for the podcast. It's not that hard, bud. Dude, just say the name. Fine. It's the Freedom Friends Podcast. Well, I just uh, I just had the most dramatic, important thing of my life that has ever happened to me happen today. Okay. It got dark. Yes. For four minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it was Eclipse Day. Um, yes. Yeah. It yeah. was life-changing. Yeah, my review on the right. eclipse. I would have uh, traveled thousands of miles, but luckily it went right over me and I didn't yeah. have to go anywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I worked through it. So uh, uh, I think Michelle said it was getting dark and I looked and it was dark and I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to go with, I, I, was, <laughs> I was not impressed by the eclipse. My reading is a one star. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe it was maybe it's cloudy, but it, you know, it got dark. <laughs> one star. <laughs> it got dark. <laughs> Jazz out here with the science dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, anyways, uh, welcome to the fucking Freedom Friends. Uh, pay the bills. Guys, it wouldn't be the Freedom Friends if we didn't talk about our number one sponsor, Warfighter Tobacco. Obviously, you guys have seen us all smoke them. We're here to talk about a quality product that everybody can enjoy. The great equalizer, as we've called it, the Warfighter Tobacco Stick. And it's not just cigars. They've got humidors, travel humidors, cutters, lighters, everything you need to get started on that journey. Check out warfightertobacco.com and use that code FTFO. Score yourself that sweet, sweet 15%. If you want to know my personal favorite, I'm a 762 field guy. I like that Sumatra, real nice and even keeled cigar. Great for us beginner smokers, right? And I'm told that these taste even better when you're listening to the Freedom Friends podcast. Now, back to the show. This episode is brought to you by Grill Your Ass Off. It's no secret. We're all middle-aged dudes who love barbecue. Grill Your Ass Off is our name, main go-to for our spices. That's what we use, man. Whether you're doing burgers on the grill, steaks, or my personal favorite, a little bit of pork belly burn ends, right? They've got you covered on all of that. They also have salsas. They also have seasonings and spices. They got beer salts. They've got everything, man. Check them out. GrillYourAssOff.com slash Freedom Friends Podcast or use the code Freedom Friends Podcast at checkout. Okay. Uh, hi guys. Hey, what, uh, what's happening? Uh, other than mediocre celestial yeah, it's phenomenon, gonna, it's gonna be very bad today because uh, John and Mikey are out scuba diving, they're gallivanting, gallivanting, yeah, outside, outside the country, mancation, yeah, yeah, a little mancation. It's not gay if it's underway. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is if it's underwater. Oh, that's salt water. It's kind of oh, ouch. It's hiding oh. easier. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the fuck? I thought electrolytes were supposed to help me. Yeah, help me hydrate faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It's a. I don't know. Everything feels off though, because it's like because uh, it got dark in the middle of the day. I, yes. it, Jesus yeah. Christ! Of course, it feels off. Well, there was also like there hasn't been sun for like four days, and it's just. And then it was. Yeah. Is it just me, or has there been too much? Shit! Every weekend this year, I feel oh. like every time I fucking turn around. Life is a business owner. No, there's just more shit, and I'm like, fuck! It's like there's a holiday. There's those. Remember when you could clock out and then go fucking do whatever you wanted for the weekend? No. <laughs> Those days are a lot closer for you than they are for me. I yeah. Don't. <laughs> and uh, if fuck, I mean, like this upcoming weekend, I've got the fucking store's birthday party. Mm. Fucking. So I have all that I'm planning for. So this weekend, this last weekend. Now. I went to an air show, but I, I, I did too. I had an air show for like four fucking days because yeah. we're like three miles from the Randolph air base where they oh. had the air show. Oh, I, we're like a mile as the crow flies. Oh, I bet it's a little more than that. I bet maybe you might be right. I don't know. But anyway, it's so we saw him fly in. We saw him practice, whatever. I fucking love air shows, jazz. I went Friday. Yeah. So uh, my buddy, we're going to get into this because I've, yeah. oh my God, it was, yeah. Well, first off, I already know, like, I'm an aircraft fan, but you're an aircraft fan. Uh, like, you're a fucking, but you're a fucking fan. Like, I'm an infantry guy that 
should have joined the Air like Force. You and been like you like you. My eyes were bad. You like airplanes the way I like fire trucks. Yes, I it, like it is a it is yeah. a. Uh, so my buddy um, is one of the uh, mechanics on the trainers out there. Okay. Um, so his his hangar is literally like on the flight line. Did he tell you about the one that landed without landing gear the other day? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, two days before the air show. Two days before the air show, they did a <laughs> uh, they did a belly landing. Hopes with the, one of the one yep. of the prop prop planes, the T sixes, I believe. Was it like a successful no. belly you, land? Or? There was that yeah, no. Well, I mean, they didn't die. N- nobody died. And, I'd call and that a success. Minimal damage. Yeah, they having to reskin the bottom of the bird, but oh, um, but he's a he's a mechanic out there, and uh, so uh, ten thirty Friday morning, he was like, "Meet me at the Bill Miller outside the post." So I met up with the Bill Miller yeah. and fucking got in his car. Nice. And uh, we just got into the line and uh, drove through, got to his hangar, and he parked. He had like a cone out, and we parked his car. Yeah. And fucking. Uh, so I spent the first part of the day, the first hour or so that we were there, uh, and I got to go like in the bird he was taking down. Mm. Uh, and dude, he let me fucking touch everything. It was amazing. He was like, <laughs> all right, grab that switch, pull down, flip it forward. And then like everything, like that was the main yeah. power throw and like everything came on. Nice. He's like, all right, hold these two. Which by the way, the buttons in aircraft are, these are incredible buttons. Like just the tactile feel right. of using and these things is just like, yeah. I absolutely oh, adore I could just keep doing panels. this. Yeah. Like it's a, the feel yeah, of them. It's like, just like fire. Oh, oh it's fire. so good fire this is awesome and uh <laughs> so like i was holding all these switches and like switching screens and all that shit and uh and but this thing was fucking uh there was like no skin on it and the all the seats were gone from the interior and stuff like that because they were doing they're retiring this aircraft finally so his is the second to last one that's going to come through the shop and they're doing a full refit to sell it and the, no then they're getting sent to the boneyard so it's one of those oh it's one of those they're taking them and then they get sent out to the desert and they put them in that giant plane condom and yeah. suck all the air out of it and it just sits there. I figured they'd auction these off, but no. So he's he's working on the T one. Oh, okay. Uh, the the oh. ones he's tearing down are the T one, and then he's switching over to the T thirty six. Yeah, which is so the T thirty six entered service in like nineteen sixty four. Yeah, nope, earlier than that because the two that were in there that were being serviced, the tail numbers on them were literally built in sixty one. Yeah. So these are, yeah, but they, they only use them for trainers. These are not, yeah, we're not but fighting with the thing. The thing is, is the T-38 as a trainer was faster than the 104 and the 105 Thunder Chiefs. Well, so, like they would come. And these yeah. trainers used to be what? F5s, right? Uh, no, they were the like T-36. No, but the I T-38 mean, isn't an, isn't an F5 the same as these? I th- when, when they were like, I think so. Let me look. But it's wild. It's when you're out there. Yeah. Because they, they do, it, like, yeah. they had one. But that's the thing. It's like. Because, like, the whole booster module on it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And it's an F5. Yeah, the Northrop F5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, so, which is the T36. But Right. But, um, but when they're not fighter designation, so they don't get the F number in front of them. Right. Then they default back to whatever yeah. Their, yeah. their model number is. But uh, it was dope. Because he was at that one. And they're working on them in the same hangar. Because the. The uh, the AC one thirty four one thirty five whatever it is, uh, they they the trainer for that trains in the T one. So oh. the on the T one and the uh, in the co pilot position has the joystick that would be in the the one thirty five for like extending all the boom and doing all that oh, shit yeah. like that's all in that aircraft it's just the kc oh kc, KC one thirty. Yeah. ac is attack yeah. yeah yeah uh the kc yeah and uh it's got the joystick in it and all this stuff so um to like practice all of that on this smaller aircraft and then then you have the fighter ones but they had the entire like i didn't realize it's like four bolts and you unhook a hose and the entire burner assembly just comes out of the back of a T-36. Yeah. It's like, most it's of the, nothing. Most I mean, of the, it's, even, even Abrams tanks are kind of set up. That like way, it right? was wild. So they just had this like <laughs> rack that slides into the side of it and it like clips on. Yeah. And then you just like crawl up there with like a fucking Allen key. And you're just like, bleep, 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 bleep. And then they just like fucking roll this <laughs> thing out and then it flips it up. Yeah. And uh, what's left is the intake and the fuel injection and everything because they're up right behind the cockpit. And right. so the whole back of the aircraft is the engine. Yeah. And they just, they take the 
the igniter assembly out and roll it up and then they get in there and replace all the lines and then they just roll that bitch back in. So the one I got to crawl up and fuck with, uh, you get there and the first thing they do is they're like, don't lean in. And then so he checked and he's like, okay, now you can lean in. And I was like, what the fuck? And he was like, if the seats are still in it, then the explosive charges are still underneath the seats. Yeah. So we don't let <laughs> civilians lean over. Oh. Because you don't like know what to touch and what not yeah. to touch. And he was like, wrong, wrong thing. Yep. And you take an explosive seat to the fucking face while you're leaning yeah. over this aircraft. But uh, the seats were out. And uh, and then they had all these like sandbags like in the cockpit to hold down uh, like where the seat goes. Like for some fucking reason. But there was there was like 350 pounds worth of sandbags yeah. like sitting on... Huh. Where the seat would go. I wonder if it's a if it's a spring assist for the ejection seat mechanism. I mean, I yeah, could, it has something to do it, with the ejection my, seat. But that was what my mom did in in the Air Force was she was an ejection seat tech, uh, and at that point it was a half a stick of dynamite is what would launch them out of the aircraft. Yeah, and it's just a it's just <clears> a, <throat> a shitty roller coaster. It's like a rail yeah. on each side, and it just yeah. it just slides into it. And so I wonder if it's oh. got some sort of like yeah. spring assist that keeps it. I think because the they had it all on DC slave systems. I think it's, it's probably like like on a passenger seat of a minivan, right? If, I, yeah. if you're not I, sitting in it, your airbag's not armed. Right. Yeah. I, I literally I think know, it was in there because I think there's sensors. Yeah. And because they had a DC slave to do system checks on the electronics, like I think with, without the, the seat, it's he, probably triggering something going right. like, hey, you're missing a fucking part. So they were just like, yeah. just throw a bunch <laughs> of fucking weight in there. And I bet you they have to do it to test the hydraulics. Yeah. So they need the the they need like a, approximate a weight, weight of seat and pilot mm -hmm. to make sure that like hydraulic maybe would have stuff worse, but tipped backwards if they fucking some of them look like it. Dude. Yeah. So the boat with too much water in the ass in. Yeah. But I went Friday. <laughs> I don't know what. So did you over the weekend? I went Sunday. I, I went, went Saturday. Sunday. So when I went, the only thing they had red boxed was the F thirty fives. Oh, same. Okay, yeah. so that was, the, the, yeah. I didn't know if they had changed. They were but, red boxed and armed security guards. Okay, so when I went, there was no security around them. They were just red boxed. Yeah, no, this, there well, yeah, was, that, was, that wasn't open there was public day, though. Seven yeah. MPs that were had rifles yeah. and like, yeah. They're chunky little boys. Yeah, they're fucking yeah. so cool, though. What, so did you watch the sh air show? Um, Yes, because on Friday they did Most a, essentially a, a yeah, full. I, I watched it from here on Friday. Yeah, so yeah, so. so they did a full run through without yeah. the um, like because they did a Torah, Torah, Torah. Yeah, uh, which they didn't do on Friday because they're see, only going to set that charge off once. Did you but, see the F thirty five Marine version that vertically with the takes VTOL? Off? Yeah, yeah, that's fucking cool. Yeah, I saw it from yeah. very close. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was out there the because the crew from were they. The A-10, the demo A-10, not the one that flew, the one, the static display. It wasn't there on Sunday. Really? Yeah. Had they already left? They yeah, said they were going to another air show. A couple of them left on by Sunday. But. So the, when I got there, the A-10 was there, and I can't remember if it was Idaho or Oregon, but they were, it was a National Guard bird. Yeah. Oh, that was Oregon. And um, yeah. I think it was. I think it was Oregon. It was National Oregon because it was the one that still had the giant, uh, the shark tooth on the front, wasn't it? No, this one was just gray. Was it? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, but we got there and there's the only people there other than like base staff was they had a bunch of Air Force junior ROTC kids yeah. running around. Yeah. And, uh, they were all about anywhere they could go for any of the, uh, like the museum pieces and stuff. Anybody that was selling swag or any yeah. of the ones that they could walk into. Yeah. So all the rest of the aircraft that were static display and you could just go look at them. Yeah. They didn't give a fuck. They just right. like fucked off. So I got ended up getting a hold of the crew chief for the guy that had the A10. Yeah. And uh the pilot of the F35 that was doing the demo that was just that that plane just breaks physics. Like it just yeah. does shit. They're just like that's <laughs> no, I don't think anybody's told so the, the F35 Air, the Air how Force, we're supposed to fly. The Air Force F35 demo was flown by a chick. Uh her name is Bayo. Yeah. Uh her call sign is Bayo. Because her last name is Wolf. Oh, uh, really? So she's Beowulf. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, apparently, and so I was talking to the dude, and the only reason I know that is he brought her up. Because before the VTOL one did it, so there was two F-35 yeah. demos on Friday. There was the Air Force one, and then there was the, the Marine, Marine Corps one, yeah. the VTOL. And uh, that thing, that F-35 would come across and just like drop its ass and then just shoot straight up into the yeah. air. And it was just like, what the fuck? And uh, 
I'm chilling with the crew chief of an A-10 and every time that 35 would come back where we could watch it do anything, all of us were just like, yeah. <laughs> and you just watch this thing just break physics and you're just like, no, I don't. One of the, we could, one of the coolest planes I saw was that MiG-17. Oh my God. It just looked awesome flying through the fucking air. Yeah. Do you know why it looks awesome? It's polished stainless for well, one. one. And it's, then the it's chrome. Sweat, it like, sweat back <laughs> wing design. It it's looks like cool. when I was in. It looks like a boomerang that doesn't boomerang. It, when it's, I was in second grade and you figure out that you can take a paper airplane and you fold those wings one more time. Yeah. And it gives you that like, that's what they look like yeah. just in real life. Yeah. And it's just, but God, whoever was on that stick was just absolutely ripping looked, on that thing. It, it was so like it, dope looking. It looks like so smooth too. Do you get, do you see that when they turn the after on yeah. and you had the, like that 20 foot tail that yeah. was coming out of the back of it? Uh, but yeah, the reason I found out about that pilot's name is they came in and did all this shit and like turned that thing on like three axes yeah. at the same time and then like flew back on its own path, but upside down and shit. And it was just like, <laughs> what the falls? And they were like, and she goes, that's Bayo. And I was like, what? And he's like, uh, it's this chick. She does all the demo and da, da, da. And I was like, that's how, you know, and then he rattled off like seven other pilots yeah. on the F 35. And I was like, that's how, you know, we have like eight of these planes. Is that like yeah. every other pilot in the service knows the call <laughs> sign of everybody that flies the F 35, especially by watching them fly. Like, yeah, yeah. but uh, man, that thing, I think is, we probably have a couple hundred. In yeah. I don't know. I don't know how many, but still, it's very, hundred million dollars a bird. Yeah. But uh, man, it was impressive. But yeah, the VTOL one, when it flew in and just parked. Yeah. Like, like it hovered better than most helicopters. Like it came yeah. in. A lot louder. It, <laughs> and it comes in hot and then just goes er, and just kind of sits. And I'm sitting there and I was talking to the A-10 guy because they were, they were yeah. like hopping back and forth. With, so like one would clear the pattern, then the other one would come in yeah. and fuck around and then clear the pattern. So there was kind of one always doing something. And I'm sitting there and I was like, see, this is why people think we've been visited by UFOs <laughs> Yes, is it's this shit. Cause somebody's fucking doped out of their minds in the yeah. desert and they're out testing one of those fucking things. And it comes in at mock Jesus and then just parks and then decides it's bored and just goes whoop, and just disappears <laughs> off into the fucking horizon. And All right. So I don't know like if we could get an F 35 pilot <clears throat> on here, specifically a Marine Corps one. Right. But like, I understand like flight stuff, right? I understand the throttle, the rudders, the how to fly it, you know, like what you have to do physically to make this thing do sure. it. Okay. Right. When you go into vertical takeoff mode, like I understand how a helicopter works. You have a yoke, you have a, you know, like I get it. Yeah. Right. I don't understand how to physically fly an airplane. Just straight up and down. Just, yeah. And then to like spin it in a circle. Like what fucking hand controls <laughs> do they have to, to fly it like that? I don't think they're allowed to tell us. I don't think so either, because if you look at the pictures of the cockpit, the the joysticks, it looks like they're always covered up, though. You can never. Yeah. Well, did you notice in the static displays, if you looked at the cockpit, oh, yeah. those giant like printed yeah. bubbles that were uh -huh. over the <laughs> cockpit and shit? It was just like, <laughs> damn. But yeah. like, yeah. you're not taking any motherfucking pictures. Yeah, it was dope. From any but like, I don't understand how they fly it. I don't think they do either. It's really. I think it's one of those things that if you just. If, if nobody questions why it works, it just keeps working because it's just like... I get like, it's pretty intuitive to get into a Caterpillar. Like whether yeah. it's a bulldozer or yeah. fuck. Right. Like you, you, move right? A, you move a couple of the joysticks yeah, once or twice fuck, and you're yeah. like, all right, I got it. I got it, it. Yeah. But like you're flying. You're flying, right? You got your, your fucking speed, your fucking... You got your rudders, you got your, your yoke. And then you go into hover mode. And what the yeah. fuck do you do? <laughs> and you have to speed up. Wait, what's wild is that it, I don't, it just it's it's it just sits there too. Yeah. Like it just when I say it parks in the air. I got a it, video of it, yeah. It really does, and you're just kind of looking at it going, hmm. That's not no, I'm looking at it. I have all kinds of questions oh, yeah. in my in my mind. Like I, mean the, the, I wonder if they can shoot their machine gun in this mode. Yeah. Gotta be, right? Because how fucking cool would that be? Just I mean, to be like sitting there 
and all of a sudden you fucking shoot a missile or fucking if they could do it in true lies then they can i know <laughs> i don't i don't know <laughs> that imagine, was a hairy i kind of don't think it's possible to shoot the missiles it has or, to push you right it, no, a missile wouldn't push you because you kind of let it well, go. Well, the thing go. is, you're still going to The have, guns would push you. Right. Well, that's what, like, yeah. if you fire. You're still going to have passive <laughs> thrust because all it does is it's a redirection. It, I mean, it. Yeah. You yeah, know, but it rotates. But, like, could you, you can aim? rotate. <laughs> like, with the machine gun, you yeah. have to point, like, so could you go nose down without, like, going backwards or forward or some shit? I don't know. I literally watched it fly horizontally while pointed vertically. Yeah. And that's not how wings yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, that is. Pointed up, yeah, but flying yeah. to the left. That doesn't, and that wasn't going up. Like it just yeah. kind of just. Meh. I was like, what? did you see the the the? It looked like a penguin walking though. Yeah, because the tail's just sitting there doing it, doing this fucking, weird little. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it, mind blowing. From the very fast Google search I made, uh, I found that it says no, the gun cannot be fired during a hover. Well, that's bullshit. I, I bet kinda, you it, it I has kinda. to throw the balance off. <laughs> I, yeah. Could you imagine that shit in a dog fight though? If all of a sudden you were just like, Burr! and you just like parked and everybody was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> no, no, just, not, not a, just not hit a dog the, fight. Just hit the air brakes and wait till they come by. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, oh, now it's my turn. Like, <laughs> you know how they do the, like the, what's it called? Where they fly by for, to scare the people. What's that called? They do a high speed pass. Show, show of force, show of force yeah, right? Yeah. Instead of a show of force, they fucking park it there and start laying waste to the enemy. Just yeah. Hang out. Just, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't even think you have to lay waste. I think if a jet like that shows up and just parks in midair. Yeah. Because like, we know we have that capability <laughs> and we're still out there going like, what the fuck? Yeah. Could you imagine if you're just in a country? Like you're in like, Afghanistan and they're like, oh, a fast airplane. And then it just stops, stops and, and you're looks like, at you. Yeah. And then shoots a machine gun at you. Like, <laughs> And there's somebody on the ground going like, it's not called that. I did. And it's just going to hang out I swear to God, there. I'd be the pilot to be like, yeah, <laughs> it's just gonna hang out there until we're done with our conversation. Yeah, <laughs> he just pops the pops the hatch and just starts like tossing hand grenades out. He's like, yeah, <laughs> I am in this insane piece of machinery, That's... and I'm gonna kill you with hand grenades. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just pops out with his M4, just <laughs> thwap. <laughs> <laughs> what? I needed an elevated shooting position. <laughs> this is my this is my hundred million dollar tree yeah. stand. We have the high ground now. You know what my biggest problem with the F35 is? You don't have one? No, there's there's no two seaters. Yeah. So there's, you there's no, no matter what. There's no you fucking get hope right I will ever get a ride. I have hope for other airplanes. I have hope. But the F-35, I don't think they ever made a two seat. I al I almost went back Friday night. So there might was, be a trainer or two, but. Uh, I was out there and I met one of the other mechanics. Uh, and he's like one of the <clears throat> supervising yeah. like dudes out at, out there. And, uh, and he was like, and he knew the crew that was with the static a10 and he's like and i was like i was i tried man 45 minutes i was trying to smooge this fucking crew chief i was like <laughs> I, I, I fucking want to crawl up this bird <laughs> like i want to get in there because they had the ladder down yeah. they had that fucking well, I've, I've, that, I've actually sat in an, and uh, i don't know if i sat in but i've actually like been yeah looking in a cockpit and i was like i was trying man it's, but and there was a lot of people around yeah. even on yeah. friday and he was like come back tonight around six i know them all. i'll get him to pop it open for you and yeah. i was like Mm. Yeah, but I already had plans that night. I was like, so I still want to go back and sit inside this A10. Me being a local cigar brand owner, yeah, <laughs> I went with a backpack full of cigars, smart, and I got to go up to the uh, pilots area for the C5. Oh, and they have a whole galley. They have like a camper yeah. on upstairs. Yeah, they have a galley. They have bathrooms. They have bunk houses. They have. Like it's fucking, and I keep like, that's a big fucking airplane. Right. But yeah. when you're up there, yeah, it's, it's, it feels even bigger. Yeah. It's, it's the tail. Well, when the, you're in the cockpit of that thing, you are 60 fucking feet off the ground. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the tail, the tail boom or whatever the fucking yeah. is six stories tall. Yeah. yeah. It's a massive aircraft. I've, I've, I've been around quite a few of them and it's still every time I get near yeah. one, I'm just like, see this. The funny thing is you've talked to other pilots about watching that thing fly and everybody yeah. says the same thing and they're like, that shouldn't fly. Yeah. It, like that's, and it's, they're so big that it doesn't look right. Yeah. Like when they're in the air, you're just like, yeah, that's not going fast enough. Right. Like that should but be like proportionally that should yeah. be falling out of the sky. No, it's still yeah, traveling at the 300 well, plus miles. Yeah. When, when you have a fighter jet going 300, it looks like it's going 300. 
It, yeah. when, when you have a, a fucking... When you have two football fields, yeah. two and 300, you're like, <laughs> huh. It's not moving. Yeah. But, uh, but then the, again, the F-35 is about the size of this table, and it... I'm like, yeah, I'm like, it is, it is it, retarded it can, how tiny the can, fucking plane is. So I'm, I'm though. talking to the pilot, and uh, I'm like, so what's your favorite thing about flying this over, you know, say, any other airplane? He's like, well, I don't have to wear a diaper. I have a full bathroom. That's a big pro. Fucking, <laughs> that is an argument and a half it right really there. Is. That's just like, he's yeah, like, he may be a fighter pilot, but he has to shit himself. Yeah. He's like, like <laughs> we can fly 24 hours a day uh, because we can re- they can refuel it in the yeah. air, right? Uh, they, have, they run 14 people, a, a crew of seven for day and night shift. And then they have bunks that yeah. were comfortable. Uh, they have, like I said, a, a full kitchen. They have... It, it was it was awesome the, what they had upstairs, and then they have the whole. I mean, then you can then they have the rest of. Then the you can have a sanctioned football game on the in the yeah. in the belly of it. You know, like. apparently the so the M one that was out there. Yeah, they yeah. flew it yeah. there on that yep. thing, yeah. and so uh, uh, my buddy Oz was saying that uh, on the Thursday when it landed, he was like, "We all went out there because they opened up both ends." And he was like, "It's dope to watch an M one drive out of an aircraft," and I was mm-hmm. like. What's super dope is find a C5 and watch them roll a Chinook out of the back of it. Yeah. That's like, you're just like. It's like it's given birth. It's like a fucked up turducken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a. Yeah, because you, you could put a Jeep in a Chinook and a C5. Yeah. yeah. You could have a military. With room to spare. Yeah. You could have a. Well, I guess, so I saw. I was talking military to the crew, I was talking to the crew chief that was on the C5 that flew the tank over. And he, so he showed me the pictures because we were talking about how many chains it took. And yeah. so my boy, one of my boys is interested in being something like that. So we were talking load master jobs, right? So he's like showing me all these chains and shit that um, they put on it. But he showed me a picture with the M1 in there. And there's still like, like walk around room. <laughs> like it, yeah. didn't, it didn't take up the whole thing width wise. Like, and the M1 is not a small machine. Either. No, it's 65 tons. Yes. And they could have hauled two of them. I don't know if they did. They put the skirts back on it. They put the side skirts on it. Yeah. Okay. They you, they couldn't they couldn't put it in the bird with the skirts on it. I don't know if I believe that there was so much room around the outside. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it, I think it has to do something with the tie down oh, points. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the yeah. the deflector side skirts on it right. were were in the way of the tie downs. Yeah, I got you. So. Oh, the tread defile that. Did you yeah. see the colonel with that M1? No. I the didn't. cavalry colonel that was out there with the M1? I probably, maybe I saw him. I didn't talk to him. The fat fuck that was yeah. walking around that day. Holy yeah. shit. I don't mean like, he's a little thick. I mean. There, there is no way this motherfucker made height, weight, and standards for two colonels. You know? This boy <laughs> was big. Yeah. I was like, holy fuck. Get in, get in the tank, sir. I have never seen. Yeah, I was like, I fit through the hatch. <laughs> get, get in the tank. Let me see you fit through the hatch. I've never seen a rigger's belt scream for help. Like that shit yeah. was, I was like, and you, you've got these, all of his E4s out there and he's standing there. It, it, these E4s out there with their spurs on. Yeah. And I was like, you're wearing the chrome spurs while you're moving the defilade. Like take them off, dude, before you fuck right. them up. It, like, and then when you get all that unpalletized, then take the three seconds to go strap them back on your boots. Like, but don't, yeah. Don't do the heavy labor wearing the chrome. Like, leave it alone. <laughs> like, it's Scott. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but all three variations of the Harrier are all single seaters. Yeah, F thirty five. Yeah, F thirty five. Sorry. Yeah, Harrier. Does Harrier have two seaters. Long gone. Because yeah, had, I think uh, the Harrier was. They had a Rio for the back seat. Yeah. But uh, the air show was cool. I got told a very cool story by the A ten pilot. Yeah. Uh, so. He's been a, he's, he's, he's the crew chief on that bird and has been for the last 10 years. But before that, uh, he was active side. Okay. And, uh, he was telling me about this mission that the A-10 was on, uh, in Afghanistan. And the reason that the A-10 ended up on it was because of Afghan terrain. And it's, yeah, it's just fucked it. Like, it's just up, down, up, down. It's all valley fighting and shit like that. Like it's, it's in the middle of the mountains. Yeah. Um, they would call in air support, but the fighter jets actually have a hard time. It's very easy to hide from them and it's very right. tight everywhere. And so they had called in 
I think he said 15s. And they couldn't get they couldn't get the deck low enough on the 15 to get time on target. Like right. they were having to move through it so quickly that they couldn't do anything. So they called in this A10. So the A10 goes and fights, and there was like a crazy load cloud cover. So it goes in, fucks up like this whole fucking mountainside. And then uh everything in the bird starts screaming to pull up. <clears throat> and so the pilot just fucking yanks the stick and just whap. Yeah. And uh it starts climbing. And he was and he was like, when he got back. Uh, we told him he's lucky he didn't rip the wings off the bird because he pulled 8.1 G's in an <laughs> A-10 Warthog. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, the over G on an A-10 Warthog is 4.2. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, and I was like, how did he not pass out? And I was like, oh, he did. He's like, he woke up at 30,000 feet because all of those aircraft, apparently, when you pass out and go dead stick, they just climb. Like that's huh. what they default to now. Is like if you hmm. go if you go completely dead stick, like you have no control. No, I think I think you can pull a lot of G's for a very short amount of time and not pass out. Apparently not this guy. Well, nine. Or he would pull on it long enough. Yeah, nine's a lot, but but uh, yeah, he went up. Well, but he went from like combat speed. Yeah. To eight point one. Yeah. Because it was either that or hit a mountain. Right. And so it was like. I like the idea that even fighter jets have the little like lane keep assist that we have yeah, in our right. vehicles Absolutely. where it's like pre-collision <laughs> uh, assistance. You weren't yeah. really paying attention. I'm just going to cruise for you <laughs> <And> now. <laughs> but uh, apparently this dude now holds, the, not the guy I was talking to, but one of his pilots holds the record for the most G's ever pulled in an A-10 Warthog. And that record still stands. <laughs> nice. I was like, eight point. And the, re- the reason it came up was that whole, when the F-35 was coming in, it yeah. just like would drop its ass and shoot straight in the sky. And I was like, what is the G pull on that when you decide that you just are going to go, you're going go to go flight space shuttle. <laughs> like, I don't, and he was like that right there, that maneuver, which they did over and over yeah. and over again. They were like, it's probably eight and a half G's. And then oh. the pickup. And I was like, how are they not? And there was like, there's a lot of shit in that aircraft that does a lot for that pilot that yeah. lets them do things that you just, and I was like, Oh, and it's all that shit that we don't know that it does. Yeah. But well, I'm sure they have like a bodysuit that, you know, it's, oh, they've got a, yeah, they've got yeah. a compression suit yeah. that, that helps. But like, that's one of my favorite things is to watch the G training videos. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So it, it, yeah. It's like a 22 year old blonde chick that turns into Hillary Clinton in about 30 seconds right. and then goes back to looking good. You're like, God damn. All right. Which wild or just ones. the weird breathing techniques. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Like, yeah. They yeah, have a mic yeah. and you hear all the, yeah. <laughs> cause they have to like, like I don't pressurize know. Like, like, how do you poop? <laughs> Like, is that a skill you take home? It just, know. it just falls out. <laughs> they've been, <laughs> what? what are you doing? At that point, they've been squeezed so much. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, fucking. The air show was cool. There was some other stuff out there that was really neat. There was some stuff I had no idea what yeah. it was. Yeah, some older stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, there was that one Air Force one out there that I'm looking at and going like, that just looks like an old passenger plane. Just an oh, Air Force. Oh, the, uh, it kind of was. It, like it yeah. looked like a constellation, was it? but it wasn't was that a constellation. The, was that the the silver one? The C four. Yeah. It was just you're just silver. Well, the the silver one's a C forty five. That was okay. that was right in the middle, kind of. Yeah. If that, you came, if no, you came it was out of the C five. It was straight ahead, yeah. about hundred yards. It was kind of cool though. They had no was, further down from that. There was all but there the was way a, down. There was a couple of them that were like all the well, way they down had they had all of the all of the people in period, yeah, clothing. Yes, like all the flight. Like the flight yeah. attendants. Those were, I yeah. think that might've been like the commemorative air force group yeah. uh, out of San Marcos. One They've of them was the, uh, the yellow rose is out of that museum. Yeah. Out of San Marcos. Yeah. And the was, other one is the Marine Corps one. I was, I was standing out here when she came in for on approach, uh, Friday. We did, we got fuck all done Friday because yeah. both of us were just making laps back and forth out back, just watching the planes. Like we were standing out there. Uh, well the Thunderbirds, that was the only good show they put on was Friday. Yeah, the, the Thunderbirds. The did sky them. was clear, and they did their full run. Yeah, which and the Saturday was, and Saturday and Sunday, it was a very dumbed down version. Friday well, was also dope too because it was blue skies, but we had those big flat clouds that yeah. were at super high altitude. Okay, so you had that great backdrop right. to actually see how fast everything was. Because if you have no backdrop to give you like a sense of like what it's crossing, yeah, you lose a lot of the speed, right? Right, because it's just a blip on blue, and it's yeah. just like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
The one that cracked me up though was the were you there? Did they do the 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 refueling demo at a thousand oh. feet? So <laughs> I'm out there and they're like typically done at twenty thousand feet. They had a uh uh the the Casey and the um I can't remember the other aircraft that they had. And they were yeah, like a big one? Yeah, the the big boy that tilts further than it should be able to. The big C seventeen. Maybe it is the C-17. With the wingtips folded up? Yeah, C-17. Yeah. And uh, they were like, typically done at 20,000 feet. Well, you're we conducting this at 1,000 feet uh, in refueling formation for you to see or whatever. And they had the boom out. Yeah. But it was just two planes just flying behind each other yeah. just across the air. And I was like, that's the <laughs> demo? I could go to San Antonio International and just watch two planes fly in a line. Like, that's... Like, what the stick f- it in him? <laughs> stick it in him. <laughs> Fucking, if I don't see some penetration, what the fuck am I in here? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, when they did the explosion, though, I was uh, uh, I was coming down 1604, like when they popped it. Oh, yeah. So I was like driving by it. And there was all these people like parked on the side <laughs> of the road and uh, like on the exits and shit. But I was driving down and like and as the planes came in and dropped everything. And, uh, nice. but did you see the heritage flight? Yeah. That is the funniest shit on the planet. Yeah. Cause that P 51 is just screaming. Yeah. It just, and it, then you've got that F 35. That's just like, please don't fall out of the sky. It's also screaming. Yeah. But yeah. For <laughs> different reasons. That's, yeah. that's the thing. Like it's, that's, that's seeing two planes fight to stay in the air. Yeah. At complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Like, cause you know, that, that fucking radio and that P-51 is just like, God damn it. Well, but a P-51 can go like 400 and some miles an hour. So I, I think they're both slowed down. Yeah. I don't think the P-51's at its max no. for that heritage flight. Well, it, or you wouldn't see anything. Anything going yeah. by you at 400 miles an hour, you just yeah. don't. You don't. Because it's like 430 it. something, right, Justin? Uh, 440 miles. An it's hour, the, and then the F thirty five slowest. It's probably forty. Uh, it's, it's zero. We know. We've saw it. it yeah. Like it's 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 zero miles an hour. That's <laughs> that's how it can stay in the air. I'm saying two hundred knots, and I don't know that. Well, that's about two hundred and forty. I don't remember the math on that one. Can't stay in the air. Two thirty. Can't stay in the air below 230 miles an hour. Like, <laughs> it's just going to fall out of the sky. Just well, without doing the weird. Yeah, dude, let me penguin walk for you yeah. real quick. But uh, it's still dope. And uh, some of those pilots, even in the older ones, the Mustang and and uh, the MiG, like all of those guys, yeah. man, those guys just go out there and they're like, oh, I'll give you a show. But did you see the, the little mini jet? Yeah. Yeah. This plane weighs 500 pounds has a 47 horsepower jet motor on it that's for drones. And this thing was fucking screaming and screwing through the air, like straight up doing loops. Like, I'm like, I bet I could afford one of those fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't looked it up yet, but I wonder what a mini jet cost. I don't know, but it was, it was a cool show. It was yeah. a really, really cool show. Um, I, I did get a kick out of the giant experimental plaster down the inside of the, uh, the Cobra's cockpit that every, they had back there in the corner every oh, time i see the, the one every uh, time i a little see one a cobra. Green cobra and it had experimental in about yeah. that long just plastered down one piece of every time i see a cobra i'm just like what a piece of shit it, like that one though is nice like yeah the interior good the interior yeah. was fucking because I, I was expecting did you go look at the whiskey variant black hawk that was there the uh air force one yeah yeah that one was cool that was cool like, yeah. and I was, I was, I was like, man, all the ones I've ever been in, like there was literally like high speed tape. Yeah. Literally holding it together. This thing was well, like, they, they had the two of them side by side. So you're like, Hmm. What's hmm. funny is on Friday, there was a hmm. bunch of people looking at the whiskey variant one and not a soul looking at the army one. They were like, <laughs> yeah, so a know, quick, fuck. a quick build kit for this Sonics <laughs> jet. Oh God. Right. You should not have looked this it's up. $50,000. Oh fuck. For the upgraded version, it's fifty seven fifty. Okay, hear me out, dude. If you don't get the bigger RV, <laughs> I rewrite. You can get a jet, <laughs> but it's a one seater that weighs five hundred pounds. 
Like it would be very selfish of me to buy this fi- so? fifty seven thousand. You know, but I was looking. I was I was looking at a paraglider. A paraglider is like thirty grand for a complete setup. Yeah, this is fifty seven, and that's a jet, and it goes three hundred fucking miles an hour. It's a jet. Yeah, I don't know. My, mine's might be changing here. How far can you find one of those? I don't know. Let's see. I'm just saying, if it has at least an hour of Stall flight time. Stall speed is 58 miles an hour. If it has at least an hour fuel, of flight time, it's here capacity, to Dallas in an hour. Fuel capacity is 40. Uh, max flaps. Never ex- never exceed speed is 287 miles an hour. It's got a limiter on it? Well, well it's, it's, you have a governor it's suggested. on it. It's airframe capability. Suggested. Yeah. Max range. With 30 minutes of reserve is 304 miles. Is it about an hour. Ooh. Max range is 412 miles. So about an hour. About an hour of flight time. Well, at full throttle. Yeah. Yeah. Max cruise speed, max range, 232. Okay, hear me out though. You have to go. Let's say you have to go to NFG. <laughs> you could drive or you could show up to NFG in your own jet. Well, but then I'd have to park <laughs> it and get a rental and. You, you know what I mean? Like, nah, yeah. fuck no. You just can, land it in the alley. I was about to say. I was like, just <laughs> land in front of it. If I had my own jet, I'd just pay Dave to go to NFG. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, why guys. Can't, why can't I do I can't you go to NFG? Oh, uh, the jet. I have a busy weekend. Yeah, yeah, I'm flying my fucking jet. <laughs> so, do you get to build it? That's the quick build kit. Yeah. You have to build it. That's amazing. If you don't, so the reason something says experimental on it. Experimental means you've built it yourself or you're your own maintainer. If it's not experimental, you have to, and then you're, you have to have it serviced by an airframe or power plant, an AMP guy, AMP guy that's certified. And so then all your maintenance costs go way through the roof unless you have your own certifications. But that's why these experimental planes, the one when they say experimental, they're usually a kit or they do it. So that they can. But you've work already on, sold me, man. Like this is so that you can work on it yourself. Yeah. yeah, I'm in. Yeah, that's why it's experimental. I'm in. The other way they swing that is if they purchase surplus from the military. Yeah, they they market them as experimental, and then they can give some, rides. It's time to get a jet. Mm, it, there might be some rules about rides with experimental. I don't remember. Let's. Uh, yeah, that's get how it. Friends of Army Aviation do it with the Huey mm-hmm. down in Palaka. Time to get a jet because they do they do uh, scenic and or. Uh, you know how much I goddamn like airplanes? So much my cigar has gone out. That's all I've smoked because we're talking <laughs> about fucking airplanes. Fuck. Anyway. I mean, I'm not The air show was awesome. It, it yeah. was legitimately awesome. I was happy for <clears throat> Sunday actually had a weather break, so there, it wasn't yeah. awful in the afternoon. It was really – because I got lucky and got to go Friday, and the weather was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, when the Thunderbirds and it was were also doing- there was also, like, nobody there, which <laughs> yeah. when you want to go touch shit – yeah. When the Thunderbirds finished doing playing up in there, they came down this line and came back in and around. And they were, there was what? I think there was four of them in that formation, but they had to have been 200 yards off the deck over here. And they were like on the other side of Boar's Head. They, it was yeah. fucking amazing. And none of us had our camera because we were like, oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, to whoever in the gate line, Said freedom the fuck on at me through the window. <laughs> yeah, back at you, bud. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea who the fuck it was. Yeah. My buddy Oz's car is about, the roof is like that far off the ground. Because he rides on full airbags and shit. So this thing is like. It's not a silver or it's not a wrapped Lexus, is it? No. Okay. And uh, it's amazingly low to the ground. And uh, so whoever, whoever yelled that at me from your fucking lifted SUV. Hi. Hey, look, I, don't, <laughs> I don't, could not see who the fuck it was, but yeah. see you guys, you have a relatively decent excuse because you're on this podcast on the regular basis. And I'm still kind of weirded out by the fact that I got recognized by my voice at the auto zone. That was three miles from my house. <laughs> That's a little weird for me. Yeah. But, so, uh, but yeah, the air show was dope. Um, it, was, it was the show that was put on was great. It was, uh, so my boys are of that age now though, 
where we go to the air show and not only are they just fascinated by the airplanes, but they're asking intelligent questions. Like we went around for Austin. He's thinking about doing drone shit or whatever, right? I'm like, well, hey, let's go talk to each branch about their drone programs because they're all yeah. recruiting there, right? Oh, yeah. And so it was like not having to meet up with a recruiter on a special time. Like you just go talk to all of them, right? So we talked to like the Air Force special ops guys. Um, he might change his mind a little bit from the drone stuff to like being part of a crew now after like getting, I'm like, look, like let's go talk to the C5 guys, right? So he got to go upstairs and see all the shit too, right? He's like, holy fuck. I'm like, yeah, like all you're going to do is fly to cool parts of the world and be able to bring anything, including your golf clubs with you that you want. You're in yeah. a goddamn C5, right? And I said, let's just go talk to some crew guys. And just ask them some questions and then ask them if they like their job. Right? So, yeah, that makes sense. Every one of the C5 crew guys were like, fuck, yeah, this is the best job I've ever had. And it was a reserve out of sure. out of here, right? And, like, two of them were like, yeah, I'm trying to go active duty because I just – this is all I ever want to fucking do is get on this thing and fly. We have so much fun. Like, I, like you know see, what? like – I'm going to ask my buddy. Ask an infantry guy if – yeah, yeah like it's the job. best job they ever had. <laughs> right? Like, no, there's things we like about the infantry, but most days suck balls. Yeah. You know, like on our best day, we're flying somewhere to go like. Kill people. Well, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, those are great. <laughs> but like, you know, like the, the, I can count on my hand how many times I've flown in a C-130, a C-5 or C-17, right? Like I was in for 10 years and I've probably flown on them five or six times combined because most of the time we were in helicopters right but like those days that we flew on them i remember those were like the fucking coolest shit we did because we got on yeah but the rest of the time when it's like hey yeah. sit just, like either walk over there or get in the back of this shitty truck yeah and we're gonna get yeah and walk over walk there. over there is 20 miles yeah it's and not, then we're gonna get part of the way there and then you're gonna get out and i'm gonna point at you and go hey walk over there yeah. like it's a <laughs> yeah uh, I asked, I'd ask my buddy Chris if he wants to come and be on the show. Cause, uh, so my buddy Chris uh, just got out 04 from the Air Force. And I was talking to him about, so he was a, he went to Air Force Academy and he, he got it. He was gonna fly. Like it was, <laughs> that's the whole reason he did it was to be a pilot. Yeah. And it, at some point you have to choose if you're going to go down the path of trying to become a fighter pilot or if you want to fly something else. And he made the choice to go heavy cargo. Right. And uh, he didn't want to dive up. Uh, well, I was, I actually asked him, I was like, so out of all the flight, cause now he's got a job with, yeah. uh, uh, United. And so he's going to go fly commercial Ooh, school bus driver. But, uh, yeah, cause I've totally told him what he gets paid. And I was like, fucking yeah. okay. And like, that's a hell of a paycheck for a school bus driver. And, uh, I mean, that's, it's fucking cash and he's yeah. intro and it's still money and i was like fuck but uh <coughs> uh he and he's like so i had to make the call to go what i wanted to do and i made the call to go heavy cargo and he he flew he flew a kc he was a refueling guy and uh but he was a pilot he right. wasn't and so uh and i was like is there anything you regret not flying like was there like in the time that you were in. Yeah, when you were 12, what did you want to fucking fly? You know, uh, yeah. Within the time you were in, is there anything you regret not flying? And he was like, there's two. I never got a chance to fly an A-10 because I wanted to fly an A-10. He's like, and I never got a chance to fly a C-5. And he was like, he was like, the fighter pilot stuff is one of those fighter pilots love being a fighter pilot when they're in the bar. Yeah. And he was like, but flying a fighter jet it looks like a lot of work. It, it, it was like, it's, it's pain. It's, it's the pain. infantry of the sky. Yeah. Well, it's pain the whole time you're doing it. Yes. You have this amazing piece of equipment and yes, it's very lethal and all this kind of stuff. It's cool. But the other thing is every fighter pilot thinks that they're going to go do top gun shit and shoot down MIGs and all right. that kind of stuff. And nobody does. Well, nobody has in years. Years. Yeah. And he's like, so nobody does. And so it's nothing but training. And you don't get to like, and he was like, we actually had missions, but like we had to go like actively. Except for that one motherfucker shit. that got to shoot down a balloon. Yeah. That guy. And he was like, but it's just, it's, it's just pain the whole time. Yeah. He's like, we actually get to fly and we're flying, you know? And he was like, 
we get to stay in the air and get have to refuel the fighters because they can't stay up there yeah. and shit like that. And he's like, and we just fuck with him. And he was, just, <laughs> and I was like, but he was like, I, I actually have zero regrets yeah. that I never flew a fighter. Yeah. The only thing that he wanted to ever fly was the A-10 and not even mission parameter. He just wanted to fly that bird. Yeah. And he's like, and the C-5. Yeah. And he's like, when you go heavy cargo, that's the. Well, an A-10 is probably hard because it's a single seat. Yeah. So you got to figure out how to get qualified to fly it. It's not like you and, can go up with your buddy. But Chris is young. And I was like, how the fuck did you make 04 so fucking fast? And he's like, it's easy. He's like, I'm a pilot without a DUI. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck. That's the standard? <laughs> So, but, so my, my boy asked me what I would have liked to fly in my time period because he's a dick like that. But in my time period, I think there's only like the only thing I really would have wanted to fly was the A-10. Like that would have been bulls on parade from 2003 yeah. to 2007. Dude, they're dope though. Yeah. They haven't made one in 30 years. Like everything yeah. that's for them now is like, it's all reman parts. They're yeah. all maintenance now. It's so wild to look at them. Like when you're standing in front of it and the front landing gear is like two feet off to the yeah. left and you're just like, huh. when, when they do the joke about the whole, like, no, they built the Gow 8 yeah. and then they built a plane around it. Yeah. They are not fucking with you. It, like it was literally like, well, if we just kick the landing gear two feet off to the left, yeah. the gun fits like, but Man, that one they had out there, they didn't give a fuck. At least when I was there. Yeah. I touched everything. Oh, yeah. It, like, absolutely everything. Well, there's no secrets in that plane anymore. No. Did you notice that one of the ordnance rounds was on backwards? Oh, it wasn't there when you went. It wasn't there. So, uh, if you're sitting in it left wing, the 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 dummy piece that they had hanging yeah. on, it said FWD with an arrow, and it was pointed towards the back of the bird. Oh, really? Like, this shit's backwards. <laughs> But I was walking around it with a with an airplane mechanic, and he yeah. was literally looking at. He's like, "How the fuck is this in the air?" It like, and I was just like, "Bro, they haven't made them in thirty years." He's like, "They've made my shit since ninety three. Yeah, at least I'll correct." And he was like, "Every single one of the screws in the bottom of that wing is loose. I can see it from here." When, when did the <laughs> and F, they flew it there? When what year did the F thirty five like become operational? Because mm. like that's an old design too. Yeah, it's the latest one we use. But I think it was designed it's still in a, the eighty. I think it's still a fifth gen, and we're at yeah, sixth yeah. gen. Are we six? No, I don't think we're six. The yet. pilots there were talking about sixth gen aircraft when I was talking to them. Well, that's probably so. I think remote shit, or what's that newest one they have? That fucking, that's what I mean. Is that we're we're developing yeah. sixth gen fighters? Yeah. So the the F thirty five, as amazing as it is, is well, still technically a generation old. Yeah. So the F thirty five first flew in two thousand six and entered service with the U S Marine Corps F thirty five B in July twenty fifteen. That is still a ten year old aircraft. Yeah. In, in well, two thousand six. Well, that was almost this, yeah. When it, when it went to yeah. when it went to the sky, that was almost twenty years ago. But in service, ten years. Well, the Marines weren't the first to get the F thirty five. That's the F thirty five B. When did the Air Force, or the, no, the Air Navy Force, got their first ones, didn't it? Air Force got the F-35A in August of 2016, and oh, the okay. Navy got the F-35C in February of 19. Hmm. I think it's still bonkers. Yeah. I guess the F-22 is probably the one that came out in the 90s, which is, I didn't see one of them there, but uh, it's just as cool. Oh, the F-22 first flew in 1990 and entered, entered the service in the U.S. Air Force in 2005. There you go. In 1990, it first flew. So all these countries like Russia, that are like, oh, we got F-22 stuff. Yeah, but ours came out in 1990. Yeah. What, what is out there today that we don't know about? I goddamn guarantee there's some shit that they're working on that's like. Well, that's the sixth yeah. gen shit. That's yeah. the stuff that's just like, it's yeah. out there. Yeah, we won't hear about it for another decade. But so it's, the next it's major out. conflict when yeah. we're blowing shit up. It, yeah, I think that's the whole point with these two. Like, did you look at the body lines on the F thirty five? And there's not a straight line anywhere on it. So, but like, even when the body lines came yeah. together, yeah. everything's at a yeah. at a jagged angle and shit. And uh, you know, there's nobody there that'll talk to you about it. Like, you can't ask questions about the bird. It's just no. like, and they're just like, hey, it's fast. Yeah, it, look at it. It's pretty. Yeah, it's fucking. And uh, but I was talking to my buddy, who's an aircraft mechanic, and I was like, I get all of the angles on the bird, yeah. like the body panels, why those are yeah. all so that everything scatters when you hit it. Mm -hmm. 
but when two body panels came together, like on every other yeah. bird you see, that's it's like a flat line. It's like a bunch yeah. of squares that are bolted in. All of the body panels on that bird, including like the ladder door and everything, everything is this now, if triangular you, If shape. you look, though, that's only the forward and reverse lines. The side lines are straight. Yeah. Right. So that has to do have something to do with... Well, well, so Something. I asked him and I was well, like, it's, it's radar deflection. Yeah. Yeah. But we're talking about the seam lines. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, but I, that's actually, and I was like, I, I bet you it's like that for thrust. I bet you a flat line. If it was just two panels like that and they weren't interlocked like that, like didn't have those triangles right. to actually increase the rigidity of that line. I bet you that thing has so much fucking thrust. If that wasn't an interlocked triangle line, I bet you it delaminates the panels. Hmm. I bet you it fucks the airframe under the sheer amount of thrust that that thing can fucking produce. Because like you said, it was only on, it was only on its forward movement. Yeah, front and rear. That thing's thrust is, I bet you it's so fucking strong that if they didn't go to triangular reinforced panels that went like that, I bet you it folds those panels. So quick question, Justin. An F-35 has one or two motors. I think it's a single. I think, I thought it was central. It's that, Central fucking yeah, and how much? How many pounds of thrust? Yes, uh, the F thirty five is a single engine supersonic stealth uh, multi role fighter. Yeah, and then what was your second question? How much thrust? Because I was talking to the C five guys. Now they have four motors, but each motor has fifty thousand pounds of thrust. Yeah, I was mad that the B-55 or the B-52 wasn't there. 50,000 pounds of thrust. Per. The mini jet we were talking about earlier has 42 pounds of thrust. (laughs) Okay. So the F-35 engine produces 43,000 pounds of thrust. Now, the F-35 is a lot fucking lighter than a C-5. Like it's just a little bit. A little bit, yeah. (laughs) It's it's a pound or two. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh my god. That thing is the definition of if you put enough thrust on a brick, <laughs> it still flies. <laughs> like it's because yeah. it it doesn't nothing on it is shaped like an airplane. It's like somebody, it's like a kid drew it. It's like if you looked at it and you were like, hey Timmy, draw me an airplane. Like that's what they draw. Right? Like there's don't get me wrong. It's badass looking. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not great looking. It is a cool looking bird, but it's very thick and everything because it needs yeah. to be is all of the <coughs> those angled panels. There's no smooth yeah. lines on the bodywork of it. And that is for the stealth. That's why the yeah. B2 is shaped the way it is. It's yeah. that, that blade wing with all the triangles and shit. Well, that's the same reason the panels on the stealth on the B2 have the zigzag. It's, sure. it's stealth. Yeah. It reduces the signature. I just don't understand. I guess I don't understand radar signatures and stuff. How like. It. It. It it's diverts. Scattered. It's scattered. Yeah. It scatters. It's, it diverts. It, as opposed oh. to giving a solid reflection point. If you can get. If you can get a static. Yeah. A static point for it to bounce back. Yeah. So. But it was just. It was interesting on how the panels were put together. Because then there was straight lines. So yeah. it's. It's a. It was interesting on where they were going. Then, if you notice the paint, I don't know if it's just to make it look cool. Oh, those white stripes that ran over them? But, like, it went from, like, dark gray to light gray to dark gray. Like, you know, I don't know if that means something or... Well, have you ever seen the the actual photography of jets from the top? So, like, it'll be against, like, a mountainous background or a city background, and the shot is from the top looking at it? It does actually blend in. Yeah, yeah. And so that could just be based on where it was fighting. Right. They needed that paint scheme so that if you were looking down at it, yeah, it actually disappears, which is the same reason that most of the bottom of birds are painted that lighter color. Yeah. But. So the MIG that's polished. That's just for fucking being dope. It's fucking cool. (laughs) <laughs> it's fucking, that's a cool goddamn looking plane same thing there was a i think it was something a an f81 it was the stainless one it had the permanent mounted fuel tanks mm. 
And it was so quiet and sleek flying through the air. It just looked awesome. I wonder if that chrome finish, that polished out steel finish is literally like, well, instead of painting it to be camouflaged, we'll just make it a mirror. Oh. So that it just looks <laughs> like whatever the fuck is around it. But like, I don't think that works at all for camouflage. No. Yeah. You know, it is it is funny because I remember seeing like pictures of, you know, late 60s, early 70s Russian fighters and they were fucking like polished aluminum and chromes. Yeah. And, and then you look you at know, the- they had like two or three spots of camouflage and the guy was like, hmm, that's good. But like the German Messerschmitts and stuff, they yeah. had legit camouflage. Yes. They were dark mountainy looking on top and yeah. and white underneath blue or white well yeah, they were yeah, yeah. they were super on point with you know yeah. i mean well, give, give what a, they are but they yeah. really they really dug the all of the camouflage patterns what was that yeah. photograph that was running around out of uh the ukraine and that fighter jet and they had a picture from above it at like altitude when it was low enough to like be dropping ordnance and stuff and they had a bit and they were like find the jet and it was over like a city space and it, you literally had to like Huh. Look for it. And yeah. then you're like, oh. But it had the whole like gray, black, yeah. like scatter <laughs> kind of paint job on it. And it legitimately disappeared yeah. from above, looking down at it. And you could see like at fighter jet speeds, if you know, you've yeah. got a fraction of a second to kind of look down and see like, well, is it below me? It would blend in. Like the the problem with camouflaging any jet, right? Like especially if you're dog fighting or whatever, is your yeah. eye catches movement. So yeah. you're, you're never going to be able to conceal the movement. But I think that's the idea of thinking about air-to-air combat. And a lot of fighters drop ordnance. They just, yeah. they go so fast. Well, I, I, then, I, the air-to-air days are over. Like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so looking, you know, if you're at, if that thing's going to drop ordnance at 12,000 feet and you're cruising at 20 and you've got, you know, a more than a mile gap between you and that thing. Yeah. And that thing's scattering its profile against the, yeah. it, it's, and you, you know, I mean, what did you, what did we just say the stall speed on an F-35 was? Two 220. Something. And that's stall speed. Yeah. It's not, they're not cruising at that. Like, yeah. you know how fast it would be to move over that and not even notice that you, yeah, it was below you at over a mile. Although have you seen that HUD system in the F-35 when the pilot can look down and they're, the floor's gone and well, that's in their helmet. It's in their helmet, yeah. but they look down and the floor is gone because yeah. that thing underneath is yeah. that, which you could see when you went up to yeah. them and they just had yeah. like that gold mirror thing that it's was like underneath. an octagon looking. Yeah. Wait, Wait pilots like, even get VR? That's fine. I think it's they get all the toys. Huh? I think it's yeah. technically AR. That's valid. I think technically valid. speaking, it's. I don't know if it's augmented. Well, maybe. I wonder if you shit yourself the first time you do that, though. Like you look down, <laughs> <laughs> the floor. Where did my bird, feet go? The floor of your bird's just yeah. gone. You're just like, oh fuck! Oh right, right, <laughs> right. That's a. Uh, how do you see the instruments? Like that's what I'm saying. Is it's like, got to be a switch or something. Well, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Is I think it's augmented reality because it understands head positioning. Right. So like it only like when you look down it does it, but when you look up you can still see everything. Speaking of that, you ever. Uh, seen the video where the dude sitting in the apache on the on the tarmac oh yeah and he looks down and buries the fucking 30 millimeter into the fucking tarmac <laughs> yep. it's a pretty funny video but yeah what else is in current events i would probably bored people with airplanes enough um fuck them i mean yeah, if they, we're an hour into airplanes they're not <laughs> they checked out a while ago yeah um so one big thing that i thought was funny so the naia which is the national association of intercollegiate athletics okay um banned essentially banned uh trans trans athletes going into other uh male to female but only one way so so females can play in male sports? Yes. Females can play in male sports yeah. and males cannot play in female sports. So I mean, I'm all right with that. Yeah. Yeah. The only advantage would be like gymnastics. Yes. Like mm. bitches be bendy. Yeah. So it, <laughs> so it says, according to the transgender, transgender participation policy, all athletes may participate in NAIA sponsored male sports, but only athletes whose biological sex assigned at birth is female and who have not begun hormone therapy will be allowed to participate in women's sports. Is that a college thing? 
Yeah, so they cover about... So that's all a United States college? No. No. So they cover... Where'd that go? They cover about 83,000 athletes at school across the country. It's only like a... It's almost like a a certain group of uh, of schools. It's, I believe uh, about 80% of them are all private schools. Uh, yeah. So it's not like the... NCAA. No, not like SEC and all the all the big names, but is it equal to just different, or is it completely different? What do you mean equal to or different than like SEC and stuff? Yeah, I'm assuming these are lower tier. Yeah, yeah. colleges, okay. but it's passed. Huh? Yeah, it's not. Nothing's gonna come of it. That, that's a that's a that's a PR push. You're gonna have like one person that tries. Yeah. Did you see this whole thing with um? Prime example of it, and, the, and now we're finally... I knew it would happen, but we're finally seeing the pendulum start swinging back the other way. So, John McEnroe, the legendary John McEnroe, who I think is probably more famous for the shit he's done off the court than he is for the shit he's done on, but the tennis player, John McEnroe, apparently made a comment at some point <laughs> that uh, as good as Serena Williams is, uh, he in his prime, he could have beat Serena Williams. And so they, they went after him, whatever. And then they interviewed Serena Williams. And they were like, what do you think? And they were, she was like, I couldn't play men. She was like, it's a completely different fucking game. And this is <laughs> Serena fucking Williams. Like, yeah. this is like, and she was like, their, their speed, the power, the speed of the serves. Like, yeah. we'll never hit those numbers. It's a totally different game. But John McEnroe did the whole, like, if we really want to figure this out, and I guarantee you the entire male professional tennis association would yeah. Get behind it. Make one association. Just make one tournament. Men and women, they show up and just whoever comes out on top comes out on top. Yeah. Or or, and, or just do a, what do you call it when it's an exhibition, right? Just do some exhibition matches to find out. But like for the thing is, is no they, stakes other than yeah. something they, like science. And they do those, but it is always a show. And it's, yeah. it's, let's get them. And you, you can tell they're dialing it back. And, but even Serena Williams, who is going to go down as the greatest female tennis player of all time. Yeah. And she's a beast. Yeah. Like she's amazingly good. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I am not saying that they're, she's not a good, like, even if I had played tennis my whole life, she would kick my ass all fucking day. Like it's, it is what it is. But even she was like, no, yeah. it's it, we But like you take team sports, right? Like take the the best women's basketball team. And put it up like in college or pro, right? And put it up against the worst male team. They're gonna lose. I'm sorry, but yeah. And like, they're gonna lose. And, and this isn't that I think that one's better than the other. It's just too it gen, it's capability just fucking changes. Yeah. So there was what was that? There was that women's football league that was not the lingerie one, but there was not that one. There was actually a women's football league. Okay. And, uh, That's a real sport, the laundry one. Yeah, absolutely. It's sport. It's all, sport all, like skydiving. All I've seen is highlights. Yeah. But it looks like they're going, like they're trying to win. Like, but I'm like the like, Women's Football Alliance. There you go. And uh, so let's take them, right? We've talked about it on the show when we were talking about fucking Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey and their yeah. dating and whatever. I tell you what. Let's take any of them. And put them up against him and your average U12 boys football team. Okay. And when Travis Kelsey decapitates one of them. No, it, like I'm going to say, like, take the, the best high school boys football team. And put it up against anybody in that league. Yeah. Well, wasn't there a I, thing where uh, there was a high school boys soccer team went up they, against the women's? Yeah, the MLS. It was that yeah, MLS, the MLS women's MLS. World Cup team. Yeah, they beat them like four to zero or something like and that. And the World Cup team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I was like, yeah, that's <laughs> not, a <good> look. <laughs> that was, yeah. not a good look. This is but, the most but, uh, popular sport in the world. But our 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 point is not men are better than women. No, we're different than women. Absolutely, and we should keep men. From taking advantage Absolutely. of women's sports. That's but this is what happens. This is what happens when you do the whole like, well, it should all be the same. And it's like, okay, come on. Come play in the men's league. Well, yeah. And when you get obliterated, this isn't going to be because. But I, 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 I don't think anybody's arguing that. I think the argument is I'm a woman. I should be treated like a woman. Well, 
the when they're not actually a woman. Yeah. Right. <sighs> but the thing is, is that things like this open up the whole like you get to go compete in whatever you say you are. Yeah. And so, yes, you have a bunch of weak men. Right. And that's what this is. These right. are weak men that want to go and try to figure out where they're valuable. Yeah. And it's like, it, I'm not seeing a whole lot of women that are going like, I like to piss standing up, so let me play in the men's league. It's not a lot of that. Like, I'm not seeing a lot of that. I'm seeing a whole lot of, I'm kind of worthless. Yeah. This will make me feel better. Yeah. And it's like, now there are women that compete in men's sports, like up to including like college wrestling, right? Or maybe high school. I don't know when. It, There's some of those that. female power lift. I fuck. I'm friends with a competitive yeah. strong woman who I'm telling you right now, it could snap me in fucking it, half. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I could beat any woman at anything. Yeah. Any sport. Maybe drinking. And I, so I know some that I probably <laughs> would be like, oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Be like that Indiana Jones fucking bar scene, right? <laughs> just in the Himalayas, yeah, just yeah. fucking drinking everybody under the table. Uh, but well, you've met her, Chelsea. Oh yeah, yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea Morgan is who's a total badass, yeah. and she's awesome. Mighty as Mouse, fuck, Mighty Mouse, <laughs> and she is a fucking monster. Oh, absolutely, holy shit! And I could train the rest of my life, and I would never catch her. Yeah, but like she is just a beast. And, uh, and also one of the nicest people yeah. on the fucking planet. Like, she's absolutely incredible. So I'm not saying it, but if I put her up against, if she actually went up against male strongmen at the level that she's yeah. at, uh, if she tried Chelsea would be the first one to tell shot. you and be like, no fucking way. No. It's you not going to happen. You can hardly put yeah. anybody alive up against him, so. It's fair. Well, there's the reason he's the best in the world, yeah. and that's because he's the best in the fucking world. I'm saying in her She's a pro, but not a pro. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. Semi, yeah. Because she's, like, she goes and competes in all the big competitions, but she also, like, still does personal, like, she is not a paid strong woman. Right. So yeah. I don't, I wouldn't call her an amateur, but. But if she was, it would suck if some dude came in <laughs> and, like, took yeah. her spot. Like, that's, that's what's fucked. And, and, and that's so what I, that's this. what's yeah. fucked about it is that, like, so she has dedicated her life to turning her body into this machine. Yeah. And then some dude shows up that's, been training with men and then goes like, nope, when I'm hot to trot, I got to squat. So now well, there was I've got to fucking, there was I'm going to go fight with the women. There was that trans MMA dude that fucked. Fallon Fox. That fucked every chick up. I, I was, uh, I'm a, I'm a basic dude. So I listened to Joe Rogan. Apparently that person fought, had three fights in the UFC before it came out. Like people found out that it was like, oh no, you used to be a dude. Yeah. Like still had the same testosterone levels as a dude, the same body structure yeah. as a dude. In all fairness, female MMA, he had the same testosterone as all of those women. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a But I that's, just thought it was fucked that it was like like you knew I'm gonna keep this hush 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 yeah. and then go make these fights. Like that's well, and he was fucked. He was fucking hurting. People. Yeah, like yeah, bad. Yeah. But. but yeah, no, it's uh you know, I'm going to say that I was a big contributor in women standing up for themselves because that's my been my whole point on this the whole time is to stand up for yourself. It's push back. Yeah. Like, and, and there are certain times you see it you, now. Do, you do not need to be the more nurturing sex. It, like, fucking own your space and push it back. Yeah. Like, it's fucking... I've, I've been seeing a bunch of, uh, I can't remember her name, but the swimmer that lost to the... Yeah. Oh, Riley Gaines. Riley Gaines. She's been going yeah. around and being like, Look at this. <laughs> like, look, this is a fucked situation. Fucking like, we need to do something about this. I'm like, she understands. She's like, not, nah, not just for me. It's for yeah. the rest of the people, the rest of the girls that are coming that are not trying to lose scholarships and yeah. paid opportunities the, and stuff. The dude now known as Leah Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the world just keeps getting crazier. Mm. You know, it's like one of the things too. If you choose, I don't know if I'm if I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong, but. I feel like if you choose to like live the trans life, right? You choose that. I think the consequences of that are you don't get to compete in women's sports, right? Like that should be an implied, Fair. you know. Yes, but you, the, you shouldn't have the opportunity to seek a platform like everybody that. we're talking about. I guarantee you became trans to do that. 
And, and that's yeah. And that's what we. That's what we, as people who aren't in that lifestyle, assume, because that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Right. Well, you don't hear about the fucking transsexual baker down the street. Yeah. You hear you hear about the dude in college who decided he's trans and now he's smoking yeah. every possible, yeah. you know. But, but the problem I have <coughs> too is that when they're like, oh no, I'm I'm pre-surgery, I'm pre-op trans, so I need to be able to compete. And I'm like, so you're a dude. Yeah. And like you're yeah. It, like you're you're yeah, just that, a, that plumbing's still external, motherfucker. You're just a dude. And yeah. like you're like that's <laughs> This wasn't the whole like, well, and I know, I'm not even going to say that. I'll give it to him. Okay. You're trans, right? You're trans. You're not a female. You can't compete in female sports. I'm not saying you're a dude, right? If you're trans, you want to be trans, you're trans. But you're not a female that can, should be able to compete in female sports. I think, I think we've covered this at one point in the past. Yeah. And I think... I don't know if it was you or John that came up with it. it might have been. I don't remember. Either way, the Transsexual Athletics League. Yeah. Yeah. I would watch. You, you know what? But you're. I, but the problem is, is you're still going to have a dominant class. Cool. Like you're, you're. It's just going to happen. Fight amongst yourselves. Yeah. yeah. If it was. If you're a dude who identifies as a chick, you're in this league. If you're a chick who identifies as a dude, you're in this league. No, no, and that's what that's what you get to fight against. Combine them. <laughs> no, what are we going to see this? Oh, summer? it's not fair to combine them. Because let's, no, let's not let's not wait, forget. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> this summer is the Olympics. Yeah. <coughs> Has there been any ruling on how this is going to handle be handled in the Olympics? Oof. Are there any? Ooh, I will do a quick look. Are there yeah. any Olympic athletes? That's what that's what I want. It's like have, yeah. have they made a declaration? Because personally, I feel like this goes against anti doping laws. Like if you're a bobsled person, I don't know if it matters a whole lot. I'd still think it goes against anti-doping laws. Yeah, but you can still run and push faster. And that launches everything on a bobsled yeah. team. So you're a female bobsled yeah. team and your True. anchor is a this fucking six foot four dude that no, no. Not likes to wear thongs. And like, he's just fucking. <laughs> you put that one in first. He's staring. She's staring. It's staring. <laughs> you were good till you said it. Uh, like that's, the, that's the line. Them, they. There you go. Them, That's they fine. are steering. Yeah. All of them. You can't say it. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> it's still a human. So you, you can't give it the, you can't give it the inanimate, you can't give it the inanimate title. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. I'm looking out for you, buddy. Like I, that's the, I apologize for nothing. Spit. Speaking of inanimate titles, I've got an inanimate title that <laughs> passed the fuck out on my foot over here. Yeah. She is out fucking cold. You got a new family member, huh? I did. I did. I, uh, you have to forgive me. It's been one day and I yes. can't remember her name. Pixie. Pixie, that's right. Yeah. Pixie's a four month old German shepherd. And, uh, she had, uh, she had a first full day of being a shop dog today. And I think she's already over it because she's, she did dead. very well though. She did. She did. Yeah. She, uh, Walking up to the door this morning scared the shit out of her. Yeah. Literally. So that was what I was taking care of when I talked to you this morning. Uh, but uh, no, yesterday was yesterday was a good day. I went and picked her up and uh, threw a lot of things at her. She's uh, she's okay with Kira. She was barking at her and Kira didn't give two fucks. And yeah. she kept on walking up to check, out her, check her out. Um, she met Chunk this morning. That was entertaining because she was just like, oh, hey, what's up? And Chunk was not interested yeah so he was he was doing a little growling uh yeah so local breeder she's got a she's got a brother that's still available so but he's mac told me he's that one's a working dog uh that one's got a really high drive yeah so uh, yeah mac tried to get me to come take one of those puppies and i was like <laughs> fuck off and he was like, <laughs> what and i was like i've got two uh, I don't, yeah. and, yeah. Three's, three's not happening. Yeah. Well, it's good having a pup. Mm-hmm. Good having a dog. So, Is it two months already? Uh, She's four months. Four months. Four months old. Yeah. 
Yep. So got to, got a couple of stops to make. We got to get her into a vet and get her checked over. And, Cause that was part of the adoption contract, which yeah. is pretty awesome. His adoption contract is really nice. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll share with you offline. It's, it's uh he's got a couple of things in there that are like, I 100% agree with everything in that statement. Nice. So he was going to get her plumbing ripped out tomorrow. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh cause that's, we, uh, well, we, we rescued her, but she was being fostered. Uh, otherwise known as fucking ignored. Yeah. She was like 20 pounds underweight when I got Oof, her and yeah. shit like that. And uh, she's super healthy now, which is what we've been waiting on. That's why she didn't immediately go in and get fixed. Right. <clears throat> um, I was also waiting for her to actually, uh, I was like, we'll, we'll get her healthy. I guarantee you once we get her healthy, her cycle's going to start. Yeah. And as soon as the cycle's yeah. over, she's going to the vet. So she goes tomorrow yeah. and she's getting all of her, her plumbing ripped out. And uh, but she's two and a half. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, fucking bad dog owners piss me off yes yep and i'm just like especially ones that get into working breeds and shit like that like my malinois owners and shit and they're like no it's fine it just sits next to me and i'm like so you bought an active working dog and don't yeah. actively work the dog the fuck's wrong with you get a lap dog it like it you don't need this dog like you're just yeah. a, this is abuse it, like i don't the fuck are you doing well, they're bomb dogs. Are you a bomb tech? Or are you a drug cop? Are you <laughs> any of these things? No. Why the fuck do you have this dog? It like, you have no idea what it takes to run these dogs, but they think they're cool. So. Yeah. This one's got a pretty, uh, pretty low drive. Pretty late so back. far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's, uh, she's just kind of super interested in being close and, uh, doesn't really want to run. Doesn't really want to chase. Doesn't, or shepherd. Not super on the play, you know, she's, but like, I mean, I, that's what shepherds. Do. I've, I've got, I've got family that have had, that have had shepherds. You know, I grew up around labs and came yeah. up while they had the shepherds. And I mean, I've got, know, a, they, they I've all, got a 90 pound shepherd in my house that still thinks it fits on Caitlin's lap. Yes. Know? I'm like, <laughs> she's like, why is it like this? I'm like, it's a shepherd. Yeah. Like it, it just wants oh, yeah. to know where its things are. Yes. All the time. Yeah. Yeah, so it is either on your lap or it's doing laps. Yeah. It, yep. Like it's, and yep. that's all they do. Like that's. Yeah. Like, I had, I had forgotten about the 360. Yeah. And then we one. did a, then we got a second one and she was like, oh, and I was like, yeah. She's like, why don't they just lay down? I was like, they don't do that. But this they, one does. They, oh yeah. They, yeah. She's uh it's four months old. Yeah. Pump your brakes. Yeah. It, it, like <laughs> no. they all sleep at four months old. Yes. It, like about a year. Yeah. When they just are going to check everything and they come back and stare at you and they yep. go, okay, I got to check everything again. Well, that's fine. Cause that means that she's got eight months to get used to her surroundings and yep. you know, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got her on a lead right now. Cause she'll be bigger tomorrow. Yes. They're like they, they just grow so yeah. fast. Yeah. It was, it was entertaining. I was talking to a buddy of mine and he's like, you need to take pictures cause she's going to grow like weed. I'm like, dude, I've had her seven hours. I've got nine pictures on my phone. Okay. <laughs> I've got one. A Freya when I brought her home. Yeah. And she fit underneath my patio furniture. And there's only like a nine inch gap between the bottom of my patio <laughs> furniture and the floor. And she was crawling up underneath it. And now she doesn't fit on the patio furniture. Right. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, they, they just, they grow so fast. They're amazing dogs. German yeah. Shepherds are absolutely incredible. But uh, she's, she's quick on it. Like she's already picking up on some basic commands. I'm, you know, Mac, Mac started her out. With with some good basic ones. Max a hell of an owner. But. He is. He's a good dude. So I'm uh I'm happy I was able to help him out and I'm sure he's happy I was able to he's got help him out. Quite a few more. He's got uh he's he's down to one left in the litter, which is the male that uh, was her brother. So Yeah, he about a month ago he tried to get me to take him. I think he still at like four. And I was like, Yeah, no, nah, I'm good. He's like, Come on, man, you're good with him. And I was like, No. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I've got my two and they're and because they're inherently neurotic. Yeah. They're like it's just part of the breed. Yeah. And I'm like they'll all have their own personalities, but they're inherently neurotic and they're just gonna they're gonna sit there and they're gonna stare at you for no reason. Yep. And then they're just gonna walk around and they'll lay down. Then they're too hot, so they get up and they move around. Then they try and lay on the rug, but the rug's too hot. So then they get up and move to the tile. Then they lay on the tile. 
but now they haven't seen you in 30 seconds. Now they're going to come and check on you. Right. <laughs> and then they're going to stand on you and breathe in your face to let you know that, Hey, I'm still here. And yeah. Yeah. I, so, I have one like that. Yeah. Yeah. Except he's a child. <laughs> <laughs> it identifies as a German shepherd. They're great breeds though. They're, it's a, it's a great dog, but they take work and they, uh, but they're all weird. Like I've got one that eats really fast. I've got one that takes an hour to eat her food. Yeah. But like they're all, they've all got their own little quirks, but then they, you'll have to see whether or not you have one that uh, always needs to be carrying something. She, uh, you've had it a day. You have. Yeah, I know. No. So you'll find out it will no, either I'm, always need to carry something. I'm, I'm starting, I'm starting to get the inclination that she's going to be a, a hoarder. Yeah. Um, cause she found a couple of toys and, as she goes by, she picks the toy up. And then when we get somewhere, she's like, oh, I'll put the toy down for a minute. And then on the way back by, she's got to pick the toy back up. So, so they'll either always have to hold yeah. something or they just always need to know where it is. Yeah. It's one of the two. And uh, I've got one of each. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. So I've got one that just like. Do they have, do they have a shared object, though? Because that would be entertaining. It's a as blanket. Shit. Oh. Believe it or not. And okay. It was, a, it was Mila's blanket. All right. And we kept it because it was hers when it went into foster care from the original owner. So we kept it. Right. And now if one picks it up, then the other has to pick it up. And then they just walk around holding it. Oh, branch manner. Or but then if one sets it down, then Mila will go and pick it up and take it and put it back on her bed. Not in the bed that's in her crate, the bed that's in the living room. Right. <laughs> and she won't guard it. It's just, that's where it lives. Now, if I break out her little stuffy toy, that she just holds yeah. and just, walks around and just doesn't put it down and uh <laughs> freya could give less than a shit about the toy unless mila has it right yes but the thing is is that the other thing with Sherman shepherds is that you get one of two styles one that shreds it or one that babies it if they shred it it's everything right. it's the bed in their crate it's their toys yeah. it's anything and everything that they can take apart it's gonna get taken apart or they're collectors and then, then it's a, everything stays pristine all the time. And I have one of each. And I'm like, fuck me. This would have been easier if I'd gotten the same flavor, <laughs> but that didn't happen. So yeah. Mac did say her mom was a shredder. And like everything soft that was put in her crate was they shredded get, within a week. They and get, they get day. real expensive real quick. Yeah. Because if you don't keep them on thicker, softer bedding, you fuck their back up their hips up their shoulders up their knees up like everything gets fucked so then every 10 days you're in buying another hundred dollar fucking dog bed to stick in there for them to shred and just <laughs> throw the stuffing everywhere and yeah they get yeah. real expensive yeah. real quick and freya my big one is the shredder ah. so there's nothing that she yeah. can't just take apart right so it's uh you'll find out oh yeah and uh yeah, pray to God it's the collector and not yeah. the not the shredder because the. Uh, well, she's already brought one toy upstairs and tried bringing another, so I have I have an inkling, but yeah, like I said, if, if they become the shredder, because we had a ton of toys for Freya when we just had her, yeah, and she loved them and she just whip them around and stuff like that and just had them around, <laughs> and then she realized that she had the power to take it apart, and then everything. Buy flat toys, the ones that don't have stuffing in them. Yeah. So they're flat and they just have squeakers in them. Yeah. They'll pop the squeakers. She's got the, uh, she's got one, I think it was a, a Christmas themed toy, but it has a squeaker and the crinkle inside, but it's only like an inch and a half. Thick. Yeah. No. We so. have these ones that they, I bought like six of them for, her. and it's a raccoon, but it's like an elongated raccoon uh -huh. and it's just got crinkle paper in it, but it's literally just the outside fur and then like that crinkle yeah. thing shit. And that we've had for ever nice anything i give her that has any amount of stuffing yeah yeah our bulldogs like to tear apart uh, stuffing of any kind yeah <laughs> well the reason dogs like squeakers is they sound like a dying animal mm. that's why they like squeaky toys but uh, yeah i haven't found anything that freya can't yeah take apart but then i have mila that's the whole like soft mouth yeah just carry it around and doesn't want to tug. Doesn't want anything. She just, because if I like, I grab her toy, she She'll, immediately lets it go. Uh, she's like, oh, then I give it back to her and she takes it and walks off. And it's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, love them, but they are 
needy. Fuck mm-hmm. me. But we don't have kids, so yeah, it's not so bad. But yeah, they are needy, needy animals. So are kids. Anyways, sign off. I gotta pee. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, cool. Well, I was gonna do three little things, but well, there's only two of us. <laughs> <laughs> you watch that happen, and you're still like, "What? Why?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, we we do need we do need the reviews so give us a thumbs up on the youtubes and uh, uh give yes. us a review on the spotify and the the apple uh podcast stuff we need that uh for some reason helps with the algorithm justin says we need it so yes need it. yes and subscribe if you're wherever you're listening hit yeah. the little follow button whatever it is uh to get notified whenever we come out with new episodes because we come out with two every damn week. Every damn week. Yep. But, yeah. And uh, drop some questions that you have in the comments, wherever you're listening as well. Uh, maybe the guys will answer them. And uh, if they're really funny and make them laugh, then odds are they will answer them. But, but yeah. Do you plug the Warfighter podcast? Uh, no. We do a Warfighter tobacco podcast. Uh, we've been doing that, what, we're on episode 20? 20 27 we will be recording this week. All right. 27. Uh, it's a little less dick jokes, more veteran cigar stuff, mm-hmm. industry stuff. Um, there's still some dick jokes. There's, there's some common there. question it, stuff too about like, yeah. you know, cigar where to start, stuff. how do I do yeah. this? Yeah. 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 And on that one, we appreciate the, the questions. Absolutely. Cause I feel like we are running out of content on cigar stuff a little bit. So the more questions, the better on that one. Uh, jazz, you do a podcast. I do. I have a, uh, I have a very nerdy podcast, so it's it's a for a different kind of, uh, which still has plenty of dick jokes in it. Yeah, Mine still has a lot of dick jokes, um, but ours is about a, a beer and nerd shit. So that's a, so we get nerdy about beer and then we get nerdy about. What do you call your podcast? Nerd. That's one. That one's called War Hammered. War Hammered, yes. Um, and we run that one out of the uh, the other shop, but um, yeah. So uh, if if you like. Even a little bit of this. There's a sum of what's here on both of those. <laughs> I'm gonna get you on my other show at some point. Yeah. Just yeah. to confuse the fuck out of you. Just to yeah, cause, cause you've had me on yours. <laughs> yeah. I need to have you on mine just so you can be there and be like, what in the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> well, I mean, that's the way I am most of the time with you on this podcast, is what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. You talk above me sometimes, which I appreciate. So I feel like it was the most backhanded compliment I've ever gotten. No, it was self-deprecating, if anything. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Like, I love you because you're smarter than me. I'm retarded. <laughs> so. Anyways, uh, three little things. Very easy to do. Yes. Uh, well, first, I'll raise my glass. Ooh, thank thank that, you yeah. for being my it's freedom friend. Empty here, but I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll top you off. Dude, it, it. <laughs> right? Oh, I got a dribble. Ah, there yeah. you go. Uh, three little things. Uh, fucking super easy to do. Davey. Oh, smoke on. Drink on. And God damn it, boys. Freedom, Freedom the, the fuck, fuck on. on. Talk to you later.